Well, I'm using the hell out of my little, uh, well, not, I'm on little batteries for my Bedini uh, Renaissance charger. Right now I'm using on little batteries. I was going to try to do something here when I was going to use, uh, well, this is my uh, UPS uh, on a, you know, on a uninterrupted power supply. It's a pretty good one. It's by my, uh, you know, it's one of your better brands, I guess. Uh, but, you know, I didn't want to mess around trying to try to these batteries up because, I don't know if you could see that in the picture. You see how it, it's oblong shaped? See that? They're not even, It's see how that is? They see how it's bowed out? Right, Mr. Cat? <laughs> You're coming over here, you nosy. You're nosy about everything, aren't you? But, uh, yeah, this this looks like it's damaged, so uh, I'm going to replace these bad boys. But, uh, you know, I'm going to get some power tools right now. I'm going to probably, I want to take a look at some power tools because, uh, you know, the stupid battery separate chargers for those power tools, I don't think they're, they're anywhere near as good as this Bedini Renaissance charger um, that I can use for that, too. I, I would have been able to use it for this, but I think these are really damaged. And uh, I just want to warn you that, you know, if you see battery lights bowed out like this, you know, I had a hard time pulling it out of here. I uh, would not try to mess around with something like that. Um, I tried putting the, uh, pre there's a button in the back of that charger right back here. Um, there's a button back there. I don't know if you can see it. What? Uh, it's probably covered up by this thing here. Yeah, that red button. You can uh, hold that in, and that'll give it a manual charge and get like one volt going. But I don't even want to mess with that because I figure that battery's damaged. So if you see a battery that's got a shape, like it's all curved like that and it doesn't have flat sides, that means something inside of it blew up. It just went poof. It's physically damaged. You know, you're not going to restore a physically damaged battery. What this does is, I'm pretty sure how it works is that, you know, if the, if the plates are severely sulfated, um, the chemical reaction is no longer going on, it could bring back, it could, re, it could restore the, um, the chemical composition basically by getting the garbage off the plates, the sulfation off the plates. It's a, it's a really high quality desulfator, I assume. Uh, but if the f battery itself is structurally damaged, I mean, this isn't a leaking battery or anything like that. It's a sealed lead acid battery, but something happened with it. Could have been a Florida lightning strike. See how low bowed out that damn thing is? I mean, it's like supposed to be straight. It's kind of hard maybe tell on the camera, but that is probably sticking out about a good quarter inch on all sides, and it's supposed to be flat. This damn thing ruptured, man. The bottom's flat. But not the sides. The bottom and the top are flat. The sides, all four, all these sides on this over here, on this side, on this side, they're all screwed up. So I would not try to uh, charge a battery like that. You know, you're not gonna, you know, it's almost like uh, putting doing something with an engine. You got some stuck rings, or you got some sticking valves, or um, you know, maybe there's a method to freaking uh, free up the rings on the engine so you got better compression, you got better oil control. Maybe you got a sticking valve that's you got a dead cylinder because it's a sticking valve. But if you got a broken rings and you got a broken freaking valve, hey man, you know, it's it's time to replace parts. And this is that's the situation with this deal. So you know, that's the situation where this won't work, but it generally does work. And you know, it's inspired me to buy some power tools that are cordless. Because I didn't want to buy those because the stupid damn batteries are always crapping out. And I know it's like, you know, I'm not a contractor, you know. So, but I'm going to go take a look at some of them. But uh, I just want to point out, you know, it's not going to perform miracles. Like, I mean, a miracle miracle. You know, it's, if you got something damaged, hang it up, man. Hang it up. But, you know, fortunately, these batteries got a lot cheaper, man. These used to be a hell of a lot more money. They're only like 15 bucks a shot for stronger ones, high-performance batteries. I have to get two of them, um, and I think they were like double that easy some years ago. So some of the stuff got cheaper, which is cool. Now, one thing I'm going to try with this Padini charger, I'm actually going to get the automotive charger probably to five amp too. I'll probably get that next month, but uh, I don't need it right now because I got a lot of battery chargers. I got uh, um, here's my little um, 
desulfator. Got on the going on my maintenance free. Um, but I'm going to try charging this one up. But uh, what I read in the directions is you could set it, it, it. It's supposed to be up to like seven ampere hours. It's, it does about a one uh, amp an hour um, charge cycle. So it's you know it's not made for like automotive batteries. Well, this is actually like a you know a lawn tractor battery, which is actually bigger than its capacity. It's it's a large lawn tractor uh, battery. It's bigger than the capacity of the Bedini Universal Charger. But what you could do in an emergency is say like if you don't want to damage that you don't want to damage the Bedini Charger because if you um, put it on there too long, um, it'll cause it to uh, you know overheat the charger. It's, the circuit breaker might trip, then you got to let it cool down, all that kind of crap. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to exercise common sense, uh, which is this. Um, I'll just put it on one of these manual timers and, and run it for about six or seven hours. Like, I'm not going to be trying to charge a fully discharged battery anyway, and I'll put about six or seven ampere hours worth of charge into a battery that's probably about... 85 to 95 percent charged anyway probably fully charge it just to get it with that Bedini Renaissance uh, rejuvenation <laughs> um, but you know if you don't have the uh, automotive charger I, I, you really could use that universal one in a pinch you just that you want you want to get something like this you know manual timer and you know run it for maybe six or seven hours on the appropriate setting uh, for 12 volts, uh, it'll say 12 volts, 7 ampere hours. And I know like a car battery could be 95 ampere hours. And it'll take forever. But what you want to do is like run it for maybe 6 or 7 hours. Let it shut off automatically with the timer. A nice manual timer like this. And then let it cool down. Let it cool down for 30, 60 minutes. Then do it again. You'll get that thing, you'll get that thing charged up fully eventually. So I mean it'll still work in a pinch. Uh, for other situations, and it probably will bring back uh, car batteries too, even if you had to use that. Um, you know, if you don't want to spend the money on getting something else, I'm going to probably get the uh, the five ampere versus the ten amp charger because I got a lot of chargers. I don't think I need a ten amp. <laughs> I mean, I got a, a fifty amp boost charger. I got this marine grade charger in here someplace. It's right in here. This thing. It's not a bad one. You know, that seemed to do a good one. It does like three different types of batteries. I'm sure it's nowhere near as good as the Bedini design, though. And I can tell you one thing. This thing, when I got this when it first came out, this desulfator. Um, I got that, in, I think, in the 90s. That's when it first came out, as far as I know. At least when I first heard of them. Man, I tell you what, I got some serious life out of some batteries. I got one battery that, like I reset it before, I bought it in 97 or 98. It's an AutoZone one-year battery. And it's still good. I'll show it to you where it is. Actually, I have it over. Yeah, it's over back in the uh, in the pit here. <laughs> right here. And uh, I just have it on this little solar charger thing right up here. And I just had to make some new clamps for it and shit. But because uh, you know it gets wet and corroded and shit once in a while. Those clamps are steel actually. They're just copper coated. But that thing's still low test out after 17 years. So. And uh, my motorcycle battery in here, um, I finally got an Odyssey, and uh, the Odyssey battery, man, that thing's been holding up really good. I usually just clamp it on right over there, uh, where the starter is, and I put the ground on the, on the, uh, the master cylinder, and I use, like, um, um, electrical tape around a clamp on a starter so that you, uh, connector so I don't, like, ground it out to the uh, sprocket cover by mistake and short something. But that's how I, that's how I do it, because uh, it makes it real easy to charge up the motorcycle battery. But this motorcycle battery is five years old and it's in perfect condition. I think it's more than five years old, man. It's an Odyssey. So I don't know, man. If you really maintain your shit right, it freaking lasts. But there's a couple things you really can't do with it. And uh, I think in the future, I, I'm probably going to go with uh, you know some of the really super high quality batteries versus this bullshit like getting from AutoZone or something. I, I mean, I got some of those from AutoZone, but you know, you know the red top or the yellow top. You know, uh, those type Optimus might get those in the future instead of screwing around with all this other bullshit. Because I'll think if with these, but this, these Bedini chargers and you got an Optima, hey, it'll probably last you like 25 years, man. Then you have to worry about yourself lasting 25 years, right? <laughs> the better is I'll outlast you. Yeah, I want to show you also is uh, screwing around charge. Well, I was charging up these. Um, 
camera batteries I have for um, you know my video one of my video cameras uses these you know it's a Nikon so I got the regular Coolpix batteries and you know that uh, rechargeable batteries uh, typically only go to uh, 1.2 volts or you know that's about it maybe it'll go a hair higher maybe a half a volt or something but uh, uh, every single one of these batteries went to uh, 1.4 volts so you put it on there in there yeah, 1.4 volts hold I was holding uh, I was holding this together with my little prongs in my hand here I don't know how to, I don't know if I can show it to you on a, you know, I, I don't feel like digging out the tripod right now, but it's, uh, I had it on this side and that side, it was 1.4 volts, all 40s went to that, with rechargeable, so, it does, uh, it does give them a little more oomph, without damaging them at all, it, it just goes up to exactly the right amount of charge, it automatically senses it, man, I don't know what the hell Bedini did with this damn thing, but, it's damn great, and I'm figuring that, you know, these batteries are probably going to last a hell of a lot longer than this camera. Maybe I will get to 28 minutes out of them they advertise. Wow.